Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan marhaban bikum. Welcome everyone to Friday Night Live, FNL, here with Niftah. I'm your host here, Abdullah Wahid. Inshallah, my co-host Mufti Abdul Ha will be joining us tonight. How is everyone doing? How's your family? How's your community? And inshallah, I hope that everyone is healthy, safe, as we are following the news where we hear the news daily on the rise of COVID and, and hospitalization. And I think Michigan is probably the, strong, uh, the, the state that has the highest spike in COVID cases. Inshallah, everyone is safe. Everyone is, uh, their family is safe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and keep us away from any illness in the hospital, inshallah. We have people joining us from United Kingdom. Ahadan wa sahadan. Welcome. We have Khadija Arani. Uh, we have Babar Hassan joining us from Dallas, Texas. Welcome, Babar. And uh, people joining us. Welcome, everyone. So tell me a little bit about what's going on. Uh, I'll give you guys a little bit update on my side. Uh, from Ohio on our way to Michigan for the Sira Intensive. Safiya Medani. Welcome, Safiya. Inshallah, you have a great uh, drive and inshallah, a great week with the Sira Intensive. I am excited. We have people joining us from all across the United States of America. Over 200 people have signed up for on site Sira, and hun- hundreds of people have signed up for online also. Uh, a week with the Prophet وسلم, starts tomorrow at 8 9 a.m., uh, seven hours a day. Seven uh, days, uh, inshallah. I hope we are able to uh, we are able to fulfill the right of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. We are able to speak about him in a manner which is most pleasing to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are doing justice to his name, his cause, his mission. So we have people joining us from again. Um, uh, Shamam Chaudhry is saying salam to Ustad Ishaq from UK who will be joining us. Ustad Ishaq will be joining us, inshallah. We're excited. We have a, a guest scholar tonight. It is from United Kingdom. We're very excited about that. Um, and then we have um, someone from Windsor, Ontario. Welcome, people from Windsor. We like the people across the border a lot. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, anybody else that is joining us for the Sira Intensive? Who is joining us for the Sira Intensive? Ruqayya Muhammad asking, Salam, Sheikh, when are you going to Umrah? Make dua for us. All right. Got to write this down. Sister Ruqayya. Another dua request. Hope I remember it. But just in case I forget, it's good to write these things down. Uh, Ruqayya. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. In all the duas that you're making, uh, Sister Ruqayya, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Make you righteous. Keep you righteous. Accept all your prayers, your fast, your ibadah, inshallah. Well, inshallah, I plan to go Umrah right after the Sira Intensive, which is um, December 24th. So one week with the Prophet Wasallam, and then the next week in the city of the Prophet. And so we ask Allah SWT to make this easy and 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 um, smooth. We have Mufti Abdul Wahab there. Mufti Abdul Wahab, assalamu alaikum. I'm assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you? What's going on, man? Keep it big, keep it big. We want to see the whole Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that looks beautiful. Where do you want to see, Bajan? Are you in the Miftah studio? Yes, we're in the new Miftah studio that has okay. just been completed. It looks like the, the Miftah lighting is not set up. No, it's, I mean, we, have, we don't have the... This is, I'm not using the Miftah studio lighting in the camera. I'm using my laptop because right now we are setting up for Sira Intensive. So I wasn't going to excuse myself from um, the Friday Night Live. But inshallah, I'm going to be on for as long as you need me or you want me. And then I'm going to jump off. What's, what's going on? Tell us a little bit background of the Sira Intensive at, at the Miftah headquarters here in Warren. I mean, you, should, I mean, you can tell them about the background. Of the Sira. Not there. I, I don't know what's happening in the background. I just know. But I think, happening. I think, like, you know, obviously it, it takes um, to everyone enjoys the fruits that come off the tree. But very, very few actually enjoy eating the fruits, knowing the effort that went behind it. So the mm. person that plants the tree and then all the volunteers and people that are here making effort set up for the sila, and then they're actually able to sit in the class and enjoy it and take from the fruits. It's a different experience because now not only are you able to enjoy the fruits, you also know what went behind getting it ready and prepping for it. Um, I often tell people the most enjoyable part about any of these events is 
the prep and, and, and the prelude uh, or, the, or, the, or the behind the scenes of it because it actually allows you to uh, feel a sense of, uh, of, of enjoyment in that event or in that program. And wherever we can get fulfillment from in regards to Iman, we should get it, wherever, whatever that is. Uh, and for us right now, it's prepping for the Sira Intensive and pretty much setting the stage for Sheikh Abdullah to walk in and just sit down and, you know, go on a seven-day uh, enjoyable experience of learning about the Sira. Are you Pop setting the stage for me to sit there for seven hours, for seven days? I mean, I'm asking you over and over, I'll ask you live, why don't we just share the class? Because it's so long. Because everyone enjoys your teaching, Bajan. Like, that's it. That They come... They come to hear you teach. They come to enjoy. No, everybody, enjoy, enjoy, everybody enjoys you more. I'm no, telling no, you. enjoy you, Bijan. Inshallah, that will continue for as long as we can. Inshallah. Bijan, one, of those things, one of the things about Sira, it doesn't matter how long or how many times you've studied it. Uh, the Sira is, you know, it's, it's like the Quran in the sense that the treasures and the pearls that come from it always increase. So the first time you engage with it, you will take from the top. And the second time, you'll go a little deeper. And then as the deeper you go, the more you enjoy it. Uh, and a lot of the things that you get from Sira are not necessarily tangible. A lot of them are also emotional, spiritual support that allow you to do good things in other places of your life. So it's like, Allahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allahu mu'adhibuhum wa anta fihim. Like, we will never punish the ummah of the Prophet as long as you are amongst them and as long as you are within them. And uh, many of the Mufassirun, they, they, they derive from that as long as the Prophet was alive, the ummah was protected. And the moment he left, there was ikhtilaf in some ways, the difference of opinion. But there's an interesting take that Razi has. He says that, no, مُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ means as long as the sunnah of the Prophet is alive and within people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never punish that nation. He will never punish that home. He will never bring darkness to the home that has a sunnah of the Prophet because that sunnah is synonymous with light. So the idea is to hopefully, to love him is to know him. And that's what we try to do in the Sirah Intensive. And it's Allah nothing sure, it's nothing, the experience is nothing less than an Umrah trip. It's very interesting because you're walking through the life of the Prophet ﷺ and you're journeying through it together with so many other people. And everyone that learns it is coming with their own backdrop of experience. So everyone's taking different things from it. So inshallah we're able to continue no, doing it. Inshallah we'll accept. Allah make it easy. And I, I'm excited for everyone that's joining online, on site. And those so you ready to talk for seven hours straight? You're good? I don't know. It's just, you know, there's, there's no way I can make my mind and prepare for that long of a class. Except just be in it and let it be. Mm. You know, um, so inshallah, may Allah make it easy. We have our, our guest, um, uh, uh, spoken word artist is here. Why didn't you invite him onto the screen? Bismillah. Muslim Bilal. How are you doing, Brother Muslim? Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I'm good, alhamdulillah. Now, even the way you say salam sounds like your brother spit out some rhymes. And I'm like, you know what? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing, brother? I'm good, alhamdulillah. It's a pleasure. It's like 2 a.m. here in London. United Kingdom. Oh my so God! It's late. Are you, are you, you every time someone from England joins us, we feel I feel so guilty. <laughs> so what no, you, it's what, a pleasure. How's your family? How's everybody in England? How's the cases of COVID in England? Honestly, alhamdulillah, it's a pleasure to be here. The family, everyone is good. And um, with regards to COVID, it seems like a lot of people are catching it recently. A lot, of, well, a lot of people are testing positive, but they're mm. saying they feel okay. So, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this is good news. May Allah keep you safe and and, and you keep on doing the great work that you're doing. So what else is new in England? What's going on in your background? Are you writing a new book, writing a new poem? What's going on? Um, I'm relaunching the old book, inshallah, next week. So that hasn't been available for like a year. So I'm really excited that I've managed to restock because of COVID, because of um, lockdown. There was no deliveries where I was getting my book from, but now it's back. So relaunching that next week. I have a new album. That I'm bringing out next week, so everyone look out for that. That'll be available next week. What's it and called? What's also, the album called? Give us a little hint. The album's called Faith. Oh, nice. So I'm on the faith journey right now, where it's been like a long time. So I just thought, let me round everything up with a book, an album, and a film. Oh, so the future film Faith will be coming out early next year about a guy who is lost in the streets and not raised with much faith and religion. And then he finds faith and he changes his life. Oh my God. How long but is There's a lot film? of other details in there. How long is the film? It's a full feature film. So you'll find wow. it on your streaming networks next year, inshallah. Oh my goodness, man. You're an actor, you're a speaker, you're everything. <laughs> yeah. 
Alhamdulillah. Brother Muslim, Muslim Bilal has joined us before. Um, it was last year, was it last year you joined us, Habibi? When was it? Yeah, I think it was last year. Yeah. A while back, you know, Alhamdulillah. And we had an enjoyable session and um, heard some of your poems and we were able to hear your entire story. And that was the main objective of you coming on last time was to walk through your journey. Um, and mashallah, for those that were not able to view that one, uh, you can still watch it, it's still on YouTube and hear the entire journey that Brother Muslim Bilal had uh, and getting to where he is now. You know, I still remember what you told us about one of the brothers in the house, I was getting up to go somewhere to pray. And one of the times you're like, yo, where are you going, man? Just take, you know, let me, let me, and you just started, and you went with him and and the, the, the spark of Iman was was enriched in your heart. Alhamdulillah. No, but Muslim yeah. Bilal, Brother Bilal's story is unbelievable. And hopefully tonight we can hear some of his poems and his, his uh, spoken word and people can benefit and be inspired. There's many ways you can inspire people. One is by Quran recitation. One is by speeches. One is by character. Mm. One is just by silence, right? Mm. Well, you, have, you inspire me when you're silent, which is hard. I'm, 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 well, I'm going to start saying silent more than... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, especially when you're around me, if you say quiet, I'll be happy. But, uh, and, but and some people can inspire people by their eloquence, their poetry, and that was something that was common in the time of the Prophet. Mm. It was such a such a strong uh, medium of in influence. It was media it's in its own language. So, inshallah, we have that in our country, we have it in English, and something that youth, adults all around the world, especially in the West, can benefit from. So, we want to let you go on. Brother Bilal, inshallah, I mean, as you read your poem and after the poem, we'll spend a few minutes. Um, covering it and talking about it together. And then, because we don't have Imam Ishaq joining us from England as well. So, we don't want to make him wait for too long. Uh, but inshallah, he's okay. Yeah, you, I was you. actually unsure when I joined you guys last year. I thought we I spoke, I didn't realize I actually performed poetry. You performed a few poems, a few good ones too. Um, I, okay. If I recall correctly, you, I mean, I don't remember the ones you performed, but you performed about three. Uh, but even okay. one poem, inshallah, is good, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, okay, because most of my tracks um, with back, they're like, they're like songs unprepared online without doing a song. It's, it's a bit difficult because I'm not a singer, you know, like a singer. So my yeah, spoken, that time it was beautiful. My spoken word piece is more about my journey and my, my, my talk and how I came to where I am. Um, can, you, can, can, can you do that one again, if you don't mind, the one about your journey? I could do, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, that's what I'm going to ask um, do you have best anything, journeys. Do you have, do you have anything on the prophet? Oh, <laughs> I actually wrote something, but I don't know it off off my head at the moment. I wrote something for my next album, which will be out next week. It's called oh, the wow. Best of Mankind. Oh, it's called the Best of Mankind. Um, so you'd have to get me back on for that one. <laughs> you'd have to get me back on. I didn't prepare it, but if you if when when we next meet again, inshallah, I'll be performing that one. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bismillah. Um, Bismillah. So, um, it's been a journey since my conversion to Islam. And one of the best journeys i done was Hajj in 2015. And I remember walking and these words came to mind first. So I'll start with this just to warm myself up. It's called Traveller and it's on YouTube. This morning I was chilling out in London, oh, and then I ended up in Istanbul. Last night I was in Switzerland. I'm a traveler on these lands. Sitting on a boat going Santander, cross the border to Morocco, Tangier. Next month shall be Pakistan. I'm just a traveler on these lands. This morning I was chilling out in London, no. Oh, and then I ended up in Istanbul. Next month shall be Pakistan. I'm a traveler on these lands. Sitting on a boat going Santander. Cross the border to Morocco, Tangier. Next month shall be Pakistan. I'm a traveler on these lands. Ten years of traveling. I say this journey's been amazing. I gave up something for Allah, and he replaced it with something much better. You see, this life is a funny thing. I was daydreaming in Mina, then had a fat in the blazing heat. Muzdele Fat was a perfect sleep. Underneath the stars on the concrete, this belief here is concrete. Allah, look at what you've done for me. 
seriously look at what he done to me and i wish i could stop all my sins i conceal them because they're embarrassing i'm ashamed of those bad deeds but that would never stop me getting on my knees this morning i was chilling out in london no and then i ended up in istanbul last night i was in switzerland i'm a traveler on these lands sitting on a boat going santander cross the border to morocco tangier Next month shall be Pakistan. I'm just a traveler on these lands. It's amazing, look at where I am today. This ain't what I was raised amongst, I call this the chosen way. I used to go into my church every Sunday, mum's cooking recipes, listening to reggae. Typical black boy, typical black household. Walk in my jeans low, face like I own the road. Before there was no hope, I used to make a lot of dough. But if you ask me about my purpose in this life, I said, I don't know. A few books, a few months, a lot of reading, a new season. It brings a new way of thinking. I reason with a Muslim. He's speaking, I listen. I smile because of the beauty I found in his religion. This is what was missing, the final piece of the puzzle. It's starting to make sense now. Before it was all muddled, I was stuck in a jungle. Blind like a bat, now I see quite clear. It's Allah, thank for that. You see, I was on the outside, looking in. Ghetto child, lingering. Thinking, should I take it now? Thoughts were just wavering. Will it make my daddy proud? What am I going to say to him? Can I go back to my house? Mummy, I'm a Muslim. How's she going to take that down? How are they going to take it in? Will I end up kicked out? Will I get a kick in? I don't know what to do. I've got to plan my next move. I want to take shahada soon. I already got to think it through. You see, what's right for me, I have to do. I live for me and not for you. I don't believe that is true. The things I see in the news. What's right for me, I had to do. Live for me, not for you. I don't believe that is true. The things I see in the news. So I made my way down to, this one gets me every time. What's right for me, I had to do. I live for me, not for you. I don't believe that is true. The things I see in the news. 2002, made my way down to the stews, sitting on a single chair, running my fingers through my hair. It's your Phil, is your older brother here? Thankfully he says, yeah, it's my always downstairs. He'll be up in a minute. He's having a word with his mother. He comes up, I tell him I want to take my shahada. He looks at me and smiles, I stand up, receive a hug. He said, I see you as a friend and why I look at you like a bruv. Now I can feel the love, no longer feeling lost. He said, take off your crosses, take a drive to New Cross. That's where I met my uncle Yasser and his brothers from all over. They said, it's time to leave the ghetto life way over your shoulder. I said, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad, the Rasulullah, there's no true God except Allah, Muhammad is his messenger. Now I ain't going to church no more, I'm going Juma. Friday, straight and Moss Muntaz under Kutba. I wanted to get the front row, we had to get there early. He read the prayer in Arabic, I understood it barely. I really got to learn quick, got myself a teacher. And then I went to Egypt to learn the language better. Feeling all emotional, I wrote my mum a letter. In Egypt, feeling lonely, wanted to find myself a lover. I tried to get married, I suffered a bit of racism. He said, she could it be with me because my parents were Jamaican. I said, hey, I still pray and I fast in Ramadan. He said, no daughter don't mind me marrying a black man. I said, okay, cool. I'ma make the war for you. And you know what, brother, just make the war for me too. I'm just happy I'm a Muslim. I came from the streets to Islam, the ghetto. Now when I see my brother give a palm, embrace with a hug and greet with salam, salam alaikum. I'm a Muslim. I came from the streets to Islam, the ghetto. Now when I see my brother give a palm, embrace with a hug and greet with salam, salam alaikum. And my mum always tried her best to make sure her son was focused. My mum always had a smile no matter how slow I progress. And my mum would always say that my son is the best and mum never let me forget that this life was just a test. But I was raised in Christianity, I used to go church. Mum would drop me off to school, then she'd rush off to work. And mum saw her son change when I turned 19. But she still loved me the same when I converted to this dean. She just started asking questions, son, why are you doing that? I said, mum, sit with me, watch a DVD of Ahmadida. And slowly but surely, mum would recognise the truth and appreciate the change that I made since my youth. She knew I was flying away, she wanted to spend the day together. This was our moment, we went to the mosque, prayed together, and it was enough to see, make me smile to see my mum with her hair cover. And then she broke the news, she wanted to take her shahada. I said, Allahu Akbar. Because obviously, I love Allah the most in this dunya. And then I love the Prophet and his sunnah. But after my love for Islam, comes a love for my mother. Definitely, I love Allah the most in this dunya. And then I love the Prophet and his Sunnah. But after my love for Islam, comes a love for my mother. You see, it's crazy because I'm, 
I remember coming home late from the parties, intoxicated with champagne. I didn't really have love for anybody. I was a bad boy with a bad name. And now this is like my job to tell my story. Alhamdulillah, I came a long way from the streets to Islam. And now salam is what we say. And the day after I took my shahada, subhanAllah, that was a Friday. The brothers picked me up. They took me to Juma. We got there late and he started to pray. And he whispered to me, just follow my lead. I didn't understand the word that they say. And I thought he was confused like me till he opened his mouth and he said, Amen. Then we raised our hands, we went to our knees, then we raised back up, then we went to the floor, then we raised back up, then we went to the floor. That is confusing me for sure. But I didn't give up, now I understand and you're looking at a proud Muslim man and I want to go and live in a Muslim land, take a Muslim wife, buy a Muslim hand, have some Muslim kids, I've got Muslim plans, Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim man. 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 This morning I was chilling out in London, no, and then I ended up in Istanbul. Last night I was in Switzerland. I'm just a traveler on these lands, sitting on a boat going Santander, cross the border to Morocco, Tangier. Next month shall be Pakistan. I'm just a traveler on these lands. You see what's crazy is. I told my story a million times in the style of a rhyme and I was all for the youth. But now there's a thousand storytellers online. Is it all for the shine? Is it just for the views? I pray for the days when we had simplicity, when Sheikh done a speech for more than publicity. I came from the streets, I know that they're missing me. Maybe I miss them too, but what can a man do? And I remember our hijabis were all modest. Now those hijabis all turned into bloggers. And I remember Muslim Bilal was a young Malcolm X. Now Muslim Bilal in that new film out on Netflix. Oh Allah, bring us back to how we was in the start. Keep this dunya in our hands and not in our hearts. Oh Allah, bring us back to how we was in the start. Keep this dunya in our hands and not in our hearts. I just want my land, my bricks and water. I could build a house far away for me and my daughter. Cause I don't belong here, there's no place for me in this world. This ain't my home. I'm just freestyling now. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. MashaAllah. Sometimes Mashallah. I just get into it and I can just go. I can just go. No, we we, we won't want to stop you. That was so beautiful. I mean, I mean, um, the the story of every convert is special. And then you were able to eloquently express it in such a beautiful way. It makes us literally who are Muslims from birth ashamed because we don't know these experiences and then when you have this experience and you can articulate it and be so proud about it it's so it's so marveling it's so beautiful may allah accept and Amen. make you know make us amongst those what the quran says those who allah guides and then their guidance becomes even more and then there's amplified guidance which opportunities are arise for them and their means of guidance for others and our life becomes Barakah for men and guidance, and our death becomes a means of guidance. You know, everything that we do, you know, there was a Sahabi, his name was Khubay bin Adi. When he died, they cut his body part parts into pieces. And he said a poem, and his poem says something really interesting in Arabic. I'll translate. He says, Yubarik ala ashla ishilwan mumazak. He said, I don't care how they kill me, because they were gonna they were sending him for crucif crucifixion. And when they were laying him out, he was facing the qibla. He asked, Can I face the qibla? And they said, No, you can't face the qibla. We're gonna move your face away from the qibla, like insulting him, like the way that people put pork in horn of Muslims. Just rub it in their face. So he moved his they they forcefully moved his head away from the Kaaba. This is in Mecca, this is at the time of the Prophet, the fourth year of Hijrah. And um, he says, I don't mind how I'm killed as long as I'm killed as a Muslim. 
على اي جنب اي دونت كير وات سايد ات كيل مي اون از لونج از ام دون اتس دون فور ذا سيك اوف جاد اند اي نو جاد هاز ابيليتي تو ايفن ملتيبلاي ذا اوبورتونيتي اوف بركه ان ماي بودي بارتس وين ذي ميوتيليتد ان ذا بيرسون هو از ويتنسينج ذس اكسبيرينس هيز نيم از سعيد بن عامر هي سيز اي كيرلي بيكيم مسلم جاست فروم سينج ذس هوريفيك اكت دون تو ا مسلم هي واز ا نون مسلم he converts to islam and later on he becomes the governor of hims and in syria at the time of umar al-khattab meaning like these these experience of you being a muslim brings many people towards islam this experience of you practicing islam will bring many people to islam and not only inshallah someone like you but all of us our experience as of departure will be a means of illumination for the world inshallah inshallah Inshallah. I, um, I just wanted to say, no, say Zakul Khair for him joining us early, I mean, early in the morning or late at night, whichever way you want to look at it. And, um, you know, the, 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 we, we, we actually read the stories of Sahabas and their conversions for, to take uh, motivation and inspiration from them. Uh, it's enjoyable to actually hear those stories firsthand from people of our time. There's a quote of Umar anhu where he says that, Um, it, it, in a community, I, 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 I am fearful of a community in which they do not have people who have converted to Islam. Because if no one, if no one in that community knows ignorance, then they won't truly um, value uh, hidayah and guidance. So people that have gone through that process and that journey, um, we, we inspire to become like you in so many ways. And inshallah, we continue benefiting from your stories. Don't stop telling it. I know you said in your poem that I've said it a million times. <laughs> Yeah, I meant to say it a million more times, inshallah. No, no, and, and inshallah, even if you make it on Netflix, don't, don't forget the YouTube viewers. Yeah, 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 definitely. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So what else do you have in mind for, for us that we can learn from? I just want to hear you more. I'm excited. Oh, did you want to hear more? No, but yeah, yeah we, I, we, should let, we should go Muslim without going. You know, it's, it's I, thought, I just put it all into one. I don't know. How long did I go for? I think I went for like <laughs> 10. I just put a whole thing into one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, before you go, I'm just in a zone. Do you have anything on Medina? Uh, I'll give you something to end with. This is like okay. a farewell. This is a farewell, yeah? This is All a right, farewell right. salam to you and the viewers. Okay. And uh, everyone um, listening. I can, I can add some places in. Inshallah. It's like a freestyle. If you're at home with your children, um, make it as enjoyable as possible and feel free to join in on that. Uh-huh. Okay? You'll hear it. Assalamu alaikum, I'm just a man in incarceration. Mm-hmm. Assalamu alaikum, sending salams to all the nations. Uh-huh. Assalamu alaikum, walking this road to my destination. Uh-huh. Assalamu alaikum, inshallah, we're raised in heaven. Mm-hmm. Assalamu alaikum, I'm this man in incarceration. Uh-huh. Assalamu alaikum, sending salams to all the nations. Uh-huh. Assalamu alaikum, walking this road to my destination. Uh-huh. So inshallah, we're raised in heaven. Uh-huh. Together we stand. Together we fought, the Ummah united by the words of Allah, shoulder to shoulder, row after row, country to country, all across the globe, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Morocco, Afghanistan, Somalia, Algeria, Nigeria, and Jamaica. Salamu alaikum, mom, this a man in incarceration. Uh-huh. Salamu alaykum, sending salams to all the nations. Uh-huh. Salamu alaykum, walking this road to my destination. Uh-huh. Salamu alaykum, inshallah, we're raised in heaven. And feel free to shout out your country. Together we stand, together we fall. The Ummah united by the words of Allah, shoulder to shoulder, row after row, country to country, all across the globe, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Morocco, Afghanistan, Syria, Palestine, Russia, China, Bangladesh, and Philistine till there's nothing left, Syria, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salaamu Alaikum. 
This is just something I like to do at the end of sometimes my performances and get all the crowd involved because they can mention their country. And it's just beautiful because since becoming Muslim, before becoming Muslim, I thought that it was a religion that belonged to like Asians and Arabs. And then it was like, no, I was like, what is that? Like I've seen them in school. And then when I first went to Umrah and I saw all the different Muslims from all around the world, and you can tell by their dress, like, okay, these are the Nigerians, they're the Turkish, they're the Moroccans, they're the Algerians, they're the Pakistanis, they're the Bangladesh. Everyone's got Kuwaitis, the Saudis. And I think it was quite nice seeing everyone there, but based on one thing, this mm -hmm. la ilaha illallah, and seeing all those ummas come together. So I just thought of that piece, and it's like, it's beautiful that we're all united on one thing. That was beautiful. But, but Bilal, I'm sure, like, inshallah, one day when we host you on site, We'll be able to do that, and inshallah. Uh, when we do that one live, it's, yeah, we'll I, do I that one day together. Uh -huh. <laughs> Allah bless you. We're waiting for you to visit us in America. Uh, inshallah, when you're ready, inshallah, we'll do it. We'll make it happen. Inshallah. inshallah, all the best and all the success for your Netflix new um coming um series coming out, uh, uh film <laughs> and the book and the new album. Everything that you do, may Allah subhanahu wa taala put barakah in it and means the guidance for many people. I mean, I mean, appreciate you guys. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, salam. I feel bad, man. You have scholars, guests coming from England. <coughs> and we have Imam Ishaq joining us. We don't want to make him wait any longer. Why don't you join him? Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Okay. Alhamdulillah. How's your family? Alhamdulillah, sleeping. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. So you can't be loud. Assalamu alaikum, Imam. How are you doing? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nice to see you both, Mashallah. And Jazakallah khair for inviting me. Jazakallah no. khair for joining me. Allah bless you. Bless you. Bless we have to tell uh, the audience the Imam is joining us also from England, United Kingdom. Where are you joining us from the kingdom? Uh, from London, East London. London. So the other artist was also from London too? That's correct. So Muslim Bilal lives not too far from me. Um, He's from South London, so it's approximately around uh, 45 minutes to one hour drive. Oh, and the traffic there too, I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really bad. It's really oh. bad. Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah, Mashallah. Mashallah. Before we introduce Sheikh Ishaq in detail, but just a quick preview. Um, Imam Ishaq is joining us from England. Uh, Imam, recently I saw a post where they had like, I'm not <laughs> sure what it was, but I think England is a little ahead of America in certain, in certain um, services of Deen, um, they have they have like this award ceremony for yeah. like best rated imams or best rated Quran. Mm. You know, who, if I was imam in London, you know who would get the best rated imam. <laughs> yeah, we already know that, man. There's no question. <laughs> but imam, uh, and I think you know, mashallah, you were able to receive that award this year. What, what was that about? Yes, yeah, so alhamdulillah, I was shortlisted as a finalist. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't get the first place, but um, it was basically an initiative started four years ago. It's called the British. Beacon Mosque Awards. So they celebrate, like, for example, um, alimas, imams, youth work, masajids that are doing amazing work for the community. So, alhamdulillah, um, I got I got um, quite a few votes. So, out of, I think, nearly over 100 imams, I was one of the five that got finalists. Alhamdulillah. Um, so, yeah, it was a good opportunity, alhamdulillah, because the other imams are quite senior and they're doing much amazing work than me, mashallah. So, it's quite humbling. But it's, it's nice to have your work being recognized in, in a national domain, alhamdulillah. I mean, yeah, and your 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 competition is uh, very very strong in England. You know, they got a lot of scholars there, a lot of mosques there, a lot of institutions there. So if you came up as a finalist, I'm I'm gonna just stay quiet tonight because this imam looks like, <laughs> you know, mashallah, everyone likes him. No, no, alhamdulillah. You know, one thing we're blessed with in the UK, there's so many masajids. Like in London, there's we did a count recently. There was over 1,500 masajids just in London. Um, and I think it's probably more now because there's so many musallas popping up, uh, prayer rooms, mashallah. So we're, we're quite fortunate, alhamdulillah, in that regard. Allah bless you guys. Bless the world. Amen. And also, Amen. Imam, if you don't mind, give me just a quick rundown of your journey. Because I know, mashallah, you, uh, it, to this topic is the beauty of memorization. Because but who's, who's the Imam of uh, London's grandma, Saqib Khan? <laughs> No, he's he's the main he's the main mayor, the mayor of London, mashallah. Yeah, yeah. He he's, he's, the, he's the grand the grand all sheikh. You, yeah, the grand you, the grand sheikh. All you guys voted in the mayor to be a Muslim too, so you guys have some influence. No, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. He's a grand mufti there. Yes, yes, yes. 
Hamza, Imam has written a book on you know uh, the beauty of memorization. You know, oftentimes, um, I don't think it can ever be overstated that memorization is actually uh, you know a, a, a great asset that a person can have. Actually, Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah would say, al-hifdhu huwa al-ilm. Like mm-hmm. memorization is truly knowledge because if you haven't memorized it, I mean memorization, if it's not acted upon, it doesn't really benefit us. But it doesn't it doesn't uh, take away the beauty of memorization and why we should memorize. A lot of times. I feel like sometimes in our communities, there's this notion of, though I'm, we may be a part of that as well, that we have to understand everything we memorize, which is true. We should understand as much as we can. So sometimes we overstress it so much that it naturally undermines the process of memorizing the Quran, which is not should not be the objective or should not even be the unintended objective. Like it shouldn't happen at all because. Both of them are important and both of them need to take place either side by side or one after the next. And that was a journey that you enjoyed. And, and then from that, it led you towards youth work. And from that, it led you towards leading your own community in London, a beautiful masjid over there. And uh, mashallah, I was able to watch some of your Ilm Feed podcasts as well with Shabir, uh, Imam Shabir, who was on a few months ago as well. And he's doing great work. And you spoke about your journey and how that happened. And I think this platform allows that as well. And maybe you can shed some light on that. And while you think memorizing helped you in um, you know in those facets of your life so you know bismillahirrahmanirrahim you know we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know he he's you know uh, we know in the quran you know none none can guide other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the beautiful aspects of my journey is um especially growing up as a teenager um i think it's safe to say that i did have my struggles growing up as a teenager um I, I did get involved in the wrong crowd, and we did have struggles uh, connecting with the Quran. As you mentioned, Muftah uh, you mentioned as well, um, regarding the Quran, when we were young, so I was approximately around seven years old when I memorized Juz Amma, and then I started the full Quran. I've got an identical twin brother, and alhamdulillah, we, we started on the same day, and we finished Mashallah. on the same day. Mashallah. Oh, wow. Mashallah. So, That's pretty cool. So we have three brothers, alhamdulillah, me and my brother, and younger brother. Um, so we all three of us memorize Quran, alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. And, and um, subhanAllah, um, our parents, my parents were not practicing at the time. So it's not like, um, alhamdulillah, my grandfather was a sheikh. Um, he, he passed away many years ago, but he laid the foundations for the ulama in the, in the UK. So he's quite a senior scholar. And he would pray to us. I remember when I was five or six years old. Um, growing up, alhamdulillah, we... We were encouraged by the recitations of Sheikh Sudais and Sheikh Shireen in Makkah. Do you know, let me ask you, I'm going to cut you off. What was your grandfather's name? Um, um, Fatim Muhammad Laher. So, you know, Imam Suhail Laher in the USA. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, he's related to us as well from that side, alhamdulillah. So, my, my mom's my mom's, uh, my side of the family. So, yes. alhamdulillah, um, you know, we, we started from a young age and I finished the Quran memorization of the entire Quran uh, approximately at the age of 12, alhamdulillah. Yes. So, I went to uh, primary school, secondary school growing up. And one thing I look back and subhanAllah, I, I wished I had learned Arabic when I was younger because when I memorized the Quran, I didn't understand what I was reciting. So I couldn't connect with the Quran. You know, I couldn't feel the Quran in the way that I should be feeling it. You know, we lead taraweeh. Um, and you know, m- many khufad in the UK, they lead taraweeh, uh, they recite Quran, but there's no deep connection with the Quran. You know, for example, why are you reciting the way you recite? You know, Allah says in the Quran, yes, awzid alayhi wa ratil al-Quran al Yes, recite the Quran in a measured tone. But also, afalai tidabbarun al-Quran. You know, who's there to ponder over the Quran? So I guess in my, in my teenage years, between the ages of, 15 to 20 15 to 20 initially those five years were a huge struggle of my life you know um I, I i lost a bit of connection with the quran um subhanallah you know and, and it was a very difficult journey in my life um and i'm sure muslim Bilal already spoke about the journey uh, his journey earlier as well um and i had quite a lot of uh, subhanallah a lot of mentors uh, a lot of uh, teachers that helped me alhamdulillah it was in fact my first ever had journey in 2006 Wow. That really changed my life, subhanAllah. And um, when I went for Hajj, I stayed there for six weeks. This is where I started to learn Arabic. And um, this it was literally the most amazing experience. This journey changed my entire life, subhanAllah. After this journey, I started praying my Quran more regularly, my Salah. Um, alhamdulillah, you know, I was involved with the work um, of um, the brothers going for tabligh at the time as well, mashallah. And, you know, just, just in general, you know, people... So, 
the people that I was with became the people you know, people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, my company started to change and my perception started to change. And slowly, slowly, I, I literally started teaching Quran when I was only 17 years old, alhamdulillah. Um, and then alhamdulillah, for the last 20 years, I've been teaching Quran. So that's pretty much my journey. And um, even when I was in my teenage years, there were times when I would really... SubhanAllah, you know, um, whether it was Salah or Quran, there were days where I feel really empty, you know, like there's something missing. And it, 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 sometimes it felt like there was a big void, a big gap in my life. And, you know, this is this is the struggles I felt. And I'm not ashamed to say it openly, you know, that I did struggle in my life. There were times where Salah, Quran were very weak. But Alhamdulillah, Allah, I, I think Allah gave me the Hajj as a means to change my life for the better. Alhamdulillah. Mm. What, how old were you when you went for Hajj? Uh, I was approximately, I think, 19 at the time. 19 years old 19 you know old. you know uh hajj and is a is a transformable experience and people do it very late usually like they wait till like they're 60 years old they're like you know we want to make sure we get all of our sins done properly and then <laughs> we can get them forgiven and and if you know i know one friend of mine he's 39 years old he a couple of years ago he's like i want to go hajj with you sheikh but at 40. so i said what mm -hmm. i said why he said no i got some things to take care of I said, well, there's no prophethood coming anymore. I don't know why you're waiting for. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he's like, you know, you know, some more, you know, some more mistakes I've, I have because he he's he's planning a repentance. Mm -hmm. And Allah want to give him mm -hmm. tawfiq to go, um, and and repent all of us to repent sincerely. Mm -hmm. it, it it is Mufti Abdul Hab. You know, we, we see a lot of people who go for Umrah and Hajj. They're kind of people who are a lot of them are aged. It takes a lot of money to go because mm -hmm. you're 19 years old. You don't have that much money. To, to actually afford to go for Hajj. I don't know what the cost is in England, but it's very, very expensive now. So for someone to go and pay that much money at an age 19 years old, you're probably using their money, parents' money or they've saved up a lot of savings to go. 100%. So if you're going at 19, I noticed that too. When kid, young people go at 19, 20, mm -hmm. their experience is different. Mm -hmm. they, they, the, the elderly people, I'm not, I'm not here to speak on behalf of them, but they have a lot of regret, mm. you know. Mm. Like I, you know, I, I wish I'd come earlier, and I repent for all my mistakes. We also have a lot of regret as youth. Remember, I, I don't think anyone goes to Haramain in Makkah to Makkah and Madinah Munawara except that they say, "I wish I came earlier." It doesn't matter how young they come. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have a point. Says, you you have you a valid point. Right. Says that. Right. So you're right. So this 19-year-old experience of your Imam transformable because it's never too early as long as you're mature. And you mm. know why you're going, and you're mm. ready for the change. Just don't mm. go as a vacation, and like, I'm going to bump the Kaaba, kiss the walls, and come back. That's not where we're going. We're going yeah. for a purpose. You know, I tell you, I, I tell you honestly how I felt when I went for Hajj. It felt as if I, I just started my journey as a Muslim. Wallahi, I, I love my witness. It was that spiritually refreshing. And I remember um, the time when I was in Hajj, um, this is a very famous story I mentioned in my previous podcast, but um, it's relevant to what we're saying about age. Um, once I was sat in the haram and I was reciting Quran, there was an elderly gentleman next to me from Pakistan and he's reciting Quran. And as he's reciting, he's um, he's looking towards me, you know, glancing towards me. And I looked at him and he said to me, are you Hafid? I was, I was reciting the Quran as well. I said, Alhamdulillah, I'm Hafid. And, and he said to me, can you recite with me? So we're reciting the Quran together. Juz Amma, Fuqudiyah al etc. And we get to Qul uh, bin Nas, right? And he looks at me. And, and and he just like literally he starts breaking down right this, okay. this elderly he starts breaking down right and you know and obviously I spoke to him I said Abtiko you know I thought he was ill or something because he had crutches next to him right and Subhanallah Wallahi Allah is my witness Allah is my witness you know when people say in your life there's that one moment that just changes your life so this next part is amazing right he looks at me and and after he composes himself he he tells me his story. He said to me approximately over 30 years ago or so, my, my son was memorizing the Quran and my son passed away. Mm -hmm. And so when my, my son passed away, he didn't finish the Quran. Approximately 10 Jews or so left. And he said, when my son passed away, I was away from Islam. I would gamble. I would, you know, uh, deal with riba, etc. You know, I, I did everything against Islam. And I felt embarrassed. I felt bad. He said, I made dua to Allah. I said, I made two dua to Allah every day since my son passed away. Oh Allah, make me a hafiz of the Quran. And oh Allah, take me for hajj. Wow. And Allah is my witness. In that moment, the reason why he was crying, he was completing his khatam of the Quran doing hifs. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him. And no word of a lie, I, I struggled to cry in the hajj. You know, you, you want that 
you want that emotional moment. Yeah. And I just looked at him. Wallahi, I got up, I kissed him, and I hug, I remember just hugging him, just embracing him. And I looked at myself, I felt so ashamed. And I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, like even now, I, it sends shivers down my spine. Because I remember we looked at the Kaaba, I looked at the Kaaba, I looked at him, and I said, Subhanallah, Allah, how low am I? But you've given me this experience. You've used this, Subhanallah, brother to, to, as a means to change me. Allah. And then and then he was telling me his story. It was amazing. He says, for 35 years, for 35 years, I've struggled to memorize the Quran, but I kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. And he said, my health is deteriorating. I'm probably going to pass away soon. But Alhamdulillah, today Allah has accepted two of my du'as. I've come for Hajj and I've memorized the Quran. And I always say to my students, Wallahi, I always say to everyone that says to me, age is nothing but a number. To gain ilm, to gain knowledge, whether it's hadith, whether it's Quran, whether it's enrolling in a Sira intensive course, however old you are, don't let it be that you lay, let your age be a hindrance to knowledge because Subhanallah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was old when he finished the Quran revelation. Subhanallah, he was in his 40s when the Quran has been revealed to him. So what excuse do we have? You know, we can't use age as an excuse. Muslim Bilal before me, lovely brother, mashallah. He's he's not the most youngest, but mashallah, he's got an amazing memory. To remember those lyrics is not it's not easy, subhanallah. So this particular experience, it changed my entire perception, subhanallah. And it, this inspired me to do the work for Hufad and Quran. I you know, alhamdulillah, I, I always have this moment in my life whenever I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling low. Alhamdulillah, you know, this this for me was the highlight of my hajj. That's a beautiful story, Imam uh, Ishaq. And I, I think... For for um, for all of us, Bijan, um, I think it's 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 important to identify that uh, we all need continuous life changing moments, but it doesn't have to be the same moment for us. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a Hajj, it doesn't necessarily have to be an Umrah. For some people, it was just looking at the Prophet's face. For others, it was um, you know looking at their. It could be looking at your mother's face with love and muhabba. It could be something different. It doesn't necessarily have to be an Umrah or a Hajj. It's, it could be Sira Intensive. There's so many people that, mashallah, that came for Sira Intensive last year and whoever we're still in touch with, and there's they've transformed in so many ways and as hopefully we have as well. Uh, but I don't necessarily think you can plan these moments of change. No. It has to happen within the organic transition of your life. Uh, and for those that seek it, they find it. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, makes that concept clear. If you're looking for it, you will... You will definitely, we will definitely find it. Um, so I think his journey was very specific. But even 19 years old is young, right? So I mean, it's mm, not like yeah. you, you are, I mean, Allah brought, Allah allowed you to connect at, a, at such yeah. a young age and hence you're able to continue doing the work that you're doing. I mean, as, as, as Sheikh Abdullah mentioned earlier, right? Age 19, um, you know, subhanAllah, it's it, again, Allah could have taken me when I was 25 or 26, right? Mm. But Allah chose me to go at that time, at that age. Uh, and you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, Hajj was much cheaper back then. We only paid mm -hmm. like I think nearly a grand, one thousand pounds per person. Now we know that Alhamdulillah, you know, no, it's, it's still lot. expensive, but it's it's Subhanallah. People are struggling, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, people I know that are saving up for years to go. And you know, look at the COVID situation, Subhanallah. Many people have saved up, but they're not still able to go. So I always think about that aspect as well, thinking Subhanallah. You know, anyone that says to me, "I'm saving up for Hajj," I said, you know, if you've already been for Hajj, make sure to Allah that you've been for Hajj, Subhanallah. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use. Um, a sport analogy like either baseball or or, um, or football like you know Hajj and football, Umrah football, as well football, football is a little different in England okay, football, yeah. I mean, football, I mean, football or soccer no football I mean American football right <laughs> okay, um, the analogy is like you know Hajj and Umrah are home runs it's 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 hitting a home run you know base is loaded for those that watch baseball for those that don't it's good you don't watch it. It's a boring sport for many. Hey, I enjoy don't speak it. Don't against baseball. Baseball is a good sport. Baseball is amazing. I enjoy it. But nonetheless... American cricket. American cricket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's America's pastime, right? So a lot of times, then a player that's always looking for a home run, it's easy for them to strike out because they're always shooting for the fences. They're always trying to hit it. Chaka. Always trying to hit a home run. <laughs> and in the AL, like American League, they, they're known to try to hit home runs. And in the NL, National League, it, it's no, the, the concept which is known within... Uh, their, their way of play is called small ball. Let's play small ball. Let's just get on base. Mm. However we get on base. How, if it's a button single, if it's a walk, whatever we want, we just want to get on base. We're not looking to hit, throw a touchdown from the 10-yard line. We just want to keep the chains moving. Mm. So as we're sitting here today, I, I find it to be essential that the chains continue to move. Mm. We don't Beautiful. always have to hit a home run. We don't always have to go for the touchdown. Yeah. As long as the chains are moving, we're getting on base, we're finding yeah. progress, 
that moment will come. That moment will come. But if we continue looking for that moment, we might continue striking out on more important things in life. Like, for example, allowing our children to grow with us and go to the masjid. That's, mm-hmm. that, that, that's, a thing, that's getting you on base. That's moving the chains. And you know, we'll wait until my son gets a little older and say, no, well, then we'll take you for Umrah and then you're going to change your life. But what if that moment never comes? Then you've, just, you've struck out, right? And Allah gives to those that generally have the trajectory and the blueprint for it. Right, and that's that's where hopefully we can continue because Umar and Hajj Bajan generally are difficult journeys. And, and yeah. though I, I I mentioned this before as well, I think in Umrah the shift is already happening. Where majority of the people that go for Umrah are also young people. People save up money as young couples and young friends, and they go for Umrah because they, they find it to be very important for them. Yeah. And though it's become more expensive, it's actually it's happening more. You know, youngsters yeah. are going at young ages, but we have to take those bunt singles, Bajan. Yeah, I'm um, the hub. What uh, Imam Ishaq said and what you added on it was just, I couldn't add anything else onto it because Imam Ishaq spoke so beautifully, eloquently about that story. And then you, the the the, 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 the eyes on the prize, right? Mm. And, but there's a way to get to that prize. And those opportunities, in Allah has yeah. these opportunities that open up. And it's when Allah wants to show you. It's not that you can't force these opportunities upon you. And Mufti yeah. eloquently uh, articulated that. But you know, Mufti Dohab, think about where Imam Ishaq was sitting in front of the Kaaba, that view, and then this old man out of thousands of people, millions of people, like Hajj is millions, man, like you know, is sitting there listening to him recite Quran. And I don't know who it was, maybe your mother, your father, your grandparents, something you did in your early life that Allah put you in that place, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> You could you usually when people are doing the, in Mecca they want to do tawaf right, yeah. and they go to their hotels and you know yeah. have some zamzam eat some food, but you sat down you at a very calm place, yeah. for the sake of Allah you sat next to someone you don't even know him I don't yeah. know if you ever met him again, but the reality is that you were inspired by his age this aged man you know a lot of times yeah. people look at old people and they're like what does he know. And sometimes mm-hmm. people look at people like he might be even ajam, like someone who's mm-hmm. not even Arab. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what does he know? What do you know? What do you know? Mm-hmm. You know? So what does he know? This person who probably doesn't understand the Quran Arabic language, Subhanallah, is able to transform you more mm-hmm. than your parents, your teachers, the scholars that you've been around, and ma- matter of seconds, because Allah knew this was the best time for it, and now mm-hmm. Allah wanted something good to happen. So yeah. this is a very emotional story, very powerful story. And may Allah grant us more of these uh, uh, opportunities. Amen. And like Mufti Dohab said, we should stay on the course. Amen. in that path, On that path of Salat al-Mustaqeen, so many opportunities open up for us. And when you're in the company of the... In Mecca, you know what, Mufti Dohab, you know what it is? In Ironically, Mecca. in Makkah, Medina, this happens all the time. All the time, yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for some reason, it happens there's so much that you see such unbelievable experiences. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, sorry, sorry, um, just to, um, one one particular story as well. This comes to my mind. Um, so, in, in when we were in the Haram, uh, I remember um, Sheikh Sudais was a very you know I was a very big fan of Sheikh Sudais, right? Mm-hmm. So in two thousand six, there weren't many imams as we have now. So every day I'll make dua. Oh Allah, grant me Sheikh Sudais, please, please. Oh, this is Sheikh Sudais. Wallahi, for five and a half weeks, he didn't lead a single salah. Right, the last day. I remember I was under the elevator inside one of the basement rooms of the Haram. It was so packed out and I was so depressed. I was talking to the shopkeeper beforehand and he was saying to me, no, no, Sheikh Sudais is Imam, you know, inshallah, he hasn't been doing it for the last five and a half weeks. The last Maghrib, literally, uh, you know, uh, the Salat al the last final farewell Salat was Maghrib. And all I just hear is, you know, he, he says his legendary, and, and I heard his voice. And, and my heart just trembled and I heard mm. him. and the verses that he chose I, I remember he recited the verse Allah and and that was the most beautiful maghrib ever when he finished that maghrib that's when alhamdulillah you know you just have that you know not, not that you think it's all done for you but you've alhamdulillah you know you feel that you've you've had that benefit of listening to a recital that you you truly yeah, cherish you know alhamdulillah it was amazing it was amazing but you have any, what's your, I mean, I think we all have favorite salats in the haram. Like, I mean, now there's so many beautiful imams, Sheikh Bandit Balina, oh, Subhanallah. Sheikh Jahini. You know, there's one reciter. I love you guys, mashallah. Allah bless you guys. My favorite reciter right now, Wallahi, Sheikh Hassan Saleh. You guys are so fortunate to have him. 
Subhanallah. Mashallah. He's a beautiful reciter, man. He's you know, you know uh, his he's, akhlaq, he's, his personality. Um, I've studied in Egypt, alhamdulillah. I've studied in Cairo. And um, even the Egyptian Qurra look up to him. As, you know, the likes of Sheikh Hindawi, Sheikh Mahmoud Shahad, these guys listen to him as well. And, and, and every year in Ramadan, we listen to his taraweeh because we know he's led multiple places in America, right? Um, and the 10-minute clip you posted of Surah to Naml, I've been listening to that every day for the last two, three days, mashallah. So, he was like, so I, I couldn't hold my tears. He's, I was he's, sitting uh, right in front of him. And Sheikh Hassan go, and me and him go hajj together every year. Mashallah, and mashallah. he resides for our hajj group. I'm telling you, one of the most humble people that I've seen in my mm. life. Subhanallah. You know they say Ahlul Quran? Ahlul Quran. He, he is the embodiment of Ahlul Quran, mashallah. I, I have not seen a person as handsome as him either. So, you know, like, you know, like, mashallah, he's given the beauty of Yusuf and the voice of Dawood. He's Ooh. so, you know, like, he yeah. has it in him and he's so humble. But, um, you know, um, Shaykh Abdullah, you asked me my experience. I'm asking, like, if you have one salat that, that or one or two salat from the haram, from the haramain, uh, particularly that you still remember till today. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I, it was, I, I, it's experience when we mean Mufti Durrahman went alone for Umrah. You know, when uh, I think Sheikh Durrahman became an alim. He graduated. And he graduated. And uh, our father, uh, we, we had one request is that we go for Umrah without our parents, without any Umrah group. We just have our own visas. We get it with the group or somehow. And we just fly in and figure it out. And 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 uh, we did that. And uh, and uh, we stood in uh, uh, around the road, uh, Rauda, uh, behind the Prophet's grave, around that area. <laughs> and um, he recited with Duha, Imam Hudayfi. Oh, and um, this was the probably probably 2006, 2007 also. Mashallah. And Sheikh Abdurrahman became an alim in 2006. Uh, yeah, around that time. So he was he was reciting with Duha, Wallayli da Saja, Ma Waddi'aka Rabbuka Ma Qala, and Sheikh Hudayfi broke down in tears. Allah, Allah. He he erupted, he erupted like wow. And I was like, and you know, my Arabic wasn't as strong yet. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on? And like the Imam <laughs> of Medina could not read, finish the surah. And, and, and he can you imagine that Imam that's been in Medina for 40 years? Wow. You know, even now when it is Fajr Salah, it's he's he's, he's Connection with the Quran is indescribable, mashallah. And his connection to the Prophet. Yes. yes. I've seen him walk to the Prophet's grave. And then I've went, I went in the room where he sits after Salat al Fajr. I've met him there. I met him in the Imam's room. I've met him walking on the on the tiles of Haram. Mm. You know, I've met him multiple times. But that that moment broke me, and that's where it got me. Like, what is this? And then I searched the tafsir mm. of Duha mm. until today. It is one of my yeah. favorite surah because it attachments of the prophet. The way Allah yeah. speaks to his prophet, it is too good. It is too good. I think I think uh, Mufti Abdul was asking as well. One one special incident comes to mind. Uh, you know, regarding Salah, I think one of the viewers mentioned Sheikh Balila. So when I was, I went second time for Hajj 2016. My, I took my wife. She's never been, so I took her for the first time. There's one particular Maghrib Salah. It's, it's Everywhere on the internet, you can find it if you just mm. type in Sheikh Balila. So, me and my wife were in the in the Hatim area at the time, uh, and, and mm. they started clearing people out. So they said to us, "No, you have to leave, and you have to literally like inside the." Yeah, uh, you have your wife yeah. with you. Yeah. So, so we were literally the third row from from the courtyard area. Mm. So we were inside. We had shelter, right? So after Maghrib started, literally Sheikh Balila said, "Allahu Akbar," and it started to rain. Oh, started to rain, heavy rain, right? Ooh. What does he do in the second rakah? He shortens the surah, surah fatah, he prays, and what does he recite? And when he recited this, I just started crying because I knew oh exactly, God. right? And my wife's my wife's like, she's she's you could tell she was a bit agitated in salah. We finished the salah. As soon as it's Assalamu alaikum wa Assalamu alaikum wa Imagine this, right? The rain stopped exactly as he said the second salam, and all you could just hear is everyone takbir Allahu with takbir, and it, it was just an amazing. And my wife said to me, "Why were you crying so much? We weren't even covered by rain." And I said to her, "No, I wasn't crying because of the rain, because he recited a surah about the rain that Allah says blessings and mercy down for the rain." And when I showed her the translation, 
She said, is that why he, I said, yeah, he only recited one surah because he uses hikmah, he's a faqih, you know, mashallah. Yeah. Um, and that was amazing, mashallah. Sheikh Bandar has such a beautiful voice, man. But there's nothing as enjoyable as praying Fajr Salat and Sheikh Johani leading. Like he just, he shakes the haram, right? Um, yeah. But he shakes it. But, but you know, but he makes the, he makes some mistakes in Fajr, yo. Yeah, you know, he just lets it flow, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm glad you mentioned Sheikh Abdullah because not many people know that they do make mistakes. People yeah. assume that in the haram they're perfect and they don't make mistakes. Um, in fact, Sheikh Johnny, the first I, time he did, I corrected him too once. I was sitting, I was all the way, I was all the way, I was all the way to the third floor, and he made a mistake. I was like, oh, I corrected. I was like, yes, I corrected the Imam Haram. I don't think he heard me. You, you know, there's 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 one clip. Inshallah, I send it to you separately on, on WhatsApp later on, and maybe you can share this. But uh, one clip of Sheikh Johani, first ever time he went from Medina to Makkah, right? So this was mm. the first night of Tarawih in Makkah. He prayed a verse in Surah Baqarah. Thumma qasat min ba'di fahiya qaswa. He repeated this verse seven or eight times. Seven, it's, it's a YouTube clip. He repeated seven or eight times. And then guess what happened? After the eighth time, he still couldn't, because of right? He, the, uh, you know, for the viewers, Mutashabihat are similar verses in the Quran. So he stopped for five seconds or so. Took a deep breath and he recited the whole verse in one breath. And he didn't get the mistake. And um when, when I heard this, I was I was watching it live and I was just gobsmacked. I was like, wow, it was the first time I was exposed to a mistake from an Imam of the Haram. Yeah, uh, but they're, they're human, they're human beings, yeah, they're human beings, you know, mashallah, the Quran, this is the beauty of the Quran, when you memorize the Quran and you lead Taraweeh, you know, uh, unfortunately in the UK there's a big culture where the youth get put off and they, they get told not to lead the Taraweeh, but subhanAllah, it's a, it's a reminder that, you know, we are human, we are fallible, we're not imper- we're not perfect, we make mistakes, subhanAllah. Sheikh Mahir is awesome too, Bajan, but Sheikh Hudayfi, Bajan, me and our brother Sheikh Abdul Rahim, Rahimullah, with some of our students, probably had the most enjoyable experience with the Imam of the Haram with Sheikh Hudayfi. We prayed Salat in um, a certain spot that we knew, we already knew where he walks out from by this time. So right after we finished, we went there and as he walked out, he's already met us a few times. So he already knows who we are. Yeah. Uh, from America, we're Shabab. We have like maybe 10, 15 students with us. And this time he comes out and uh, Shaykh Abdul Rahim was in front of me. He actually grabs his hand and he walks with him sure. holding his hand. And he probably puts his arm around him and he's like, you know, I'm so happy to see you guys. And he speaks to him in Arabic and Allah is speaking to him and, and he calls me like, you know, my brother, my teacher, he wants to salam to you too. I said, I'm telling you, we stood there in the, in the, right in front of the Green Dome for probably five or seven minutes speaking to Sheikh Hudayfi. Like we had enough time, Bajan, to give him the entire story of our parents, who our father is, where he's from, where he's at. Asked him for dua, asked, told him about our institute. He asked us, who are these guys? Who's that? Where is this kid from? Where's that kid from? Where's that student from? He was so intrigued. And he said, inshallah, one day I promise I'll come to your school, your institution. I'll come to your country. He remembered coming to Windsor. And we explained to him how Windsor is right next to the border. Like, and everyone was just watching, like these, us like young people just speaking to Sheikh Hulayfi. And he didn't blink. And they asked him, Sheikh, allow us, you know, know, if we can walk with you to your car. And he said, Ahlan, please come. And we walked with him to his car. And it was an enjoyable experience. But um, my, my moment of Quran recitation in the Harum, we have a few. One of the moments was, I believe, in 2016 or 2017, where the first salat that we prayed in Makkah Mukarramah. You know, the first salat always gets you. And we get we just get into the Sahan, the, the, mata, the outside area. Sheikh Sudais is reading. The last passage of Surah Qamr, which is a very difficult passage. Yes, right? yes, yes. And he reads... And he reads, and he comes to the verse. And by this time, I, I, I'm already, I'm, I'm connected to, the, hopefully, to the Quran a little bit, but I understand it. You know, I, I, I love that passage. And he reads, That's one of my favorite passages in the Quran. I read that in Jummah today. It's so beautiful. And Sheikh Abdul Basit's uh, recitation of that. Yes. Too good, too good. Yeah. I mean, mind boggling. Too good. <laughs> <laughs> that, of, that people like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes nine verses to explain what Jahannam is. So but just takes two verses to explain the bounties of Jannah. This is all you need. You don't need anything more. You're in, this, you're in these gardens that have rivers flowing. Let's put that to a side for a moment. You are in the Truthful spot, location, mm-hmm. next to عند مليك مقتدر 
next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with taqiyina ala furush al I'm sure to cut you up, but you know, uh, uh, you better get emotional. Before you get emotional, the these two last these last two verses is a prelude to what's coming next, which is Rahman. Rahman. You know? So basically, in the muttaqina fi jannati wa nahar fi maqadi sidq, the righteous are in uh, in rivers, you know, in in, in paradise rivers flowing below beneath. Fi maqadi sidq in an area where it's for a righteous people in a very honorable place. In the Maliki Muqtadir, near the king who is most powerful. So this this is a there's a location, VIP place near Malik. So the Malik mm-hmm. the king, the name of the king is not mentioned here. Mm-hmm. In the Malikin, it just says near the king in a very special place. And the name of the king is not mentioned. It says Malik. And then not Allah doesn't use the word Malik anywhere. He mm-hmm. used Malik, he used Malik, but Malikin, it's an interesting word. And then then Hmm. He does it all in all avoid. I can do it if you want me to do it. Yeah, please, yeah. You know, you want me to do it? Yeah. No, no I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> so he goes. You, you, you can't build up the hype and not do it. Yeah. Well, do it. He goes. Fi maqadi sadiq inda Maliki muqtadir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ar-Rahman. But Sheikh, I thought you were gonna do it imitating Sheikh Abdul Basit. You can, but Imam Asaf, why don't you do it? No, 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 no. I would. I would, you know, but I don't want to lose. I don't want the the, the viewers to lose the other, you know. No, and you know would, the way Sheikh Abdul Basit does it when he joins Muqtadir with the Rahman as well. That's so beautiful. Mashallah. Oh, that in the Malikin Muqtadir in the Rahman. Oh, that's correct. That's correct. So basically, that's correct. now those two verses are like Allah's. Like, I got two more pages for you about Jannah. <laughs> what are you yeah, enjoy. So it's no, but, yeah, but those verses though, like it, it, when Sheikh Sudeis read it, he, that's where you're. Look, that's pretty much where you're. Laka ends, you know, then you go to Ruku. He didn't go to Ruku. He actually went backward and again and he started just bawling. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, he couldn't. Oh, he, wow. maqa, he couldn't believe like, fi maqa adi sidqin inda malik wow. al-muqtadir. This time when I was in Umrah, Sheikh Yasir, the Dusuri, I, I believe his last name is, he recites very beautifully and we were getting... Yasir Dusuri. Yeah. Very beautifully. It's such a sweet voice. And we were getting, yeah, yeah. you know, imams are older and they were reading very slow, so... A lot of the people in the group were getting restless. You know how you were saying, like, yeah, we need some we need some punch in here. And he led Aisha Salat uh, and he recited Surah Naba. I mean, we recited the surah all the time. Man. He started reciting then I mean the Ruku that in the Muttaqina Mafaza, it meant a lot. All like, it always meant a lot, but now for, for me, my brother, Rahimullah, it meant so much more. Like it's in the muttaqina mafaza. They're, they're already like hmm. mafaza is also known to be a garden in genital ma'wa, a part of Jannah, but it also means a place of success. Mm-hmm. It's it's, it's, like, it's, already, it's already a place hmm. of success, regardless of where it is, it's already success. So you don't have to know where it is. But then Allah hmm. says, No, it's hadaiqa wa a'nab, it's a garden where you have fruit. And you just really think about that's where inshallah we'll be able to go. Inshallah. Uh, but, but inshallah, Allah allows us to continue. Um, Enjoying the Quran wherever it's being recited. It's not like yeah. some of the Quran is like you know specifically only allowed to be enjoyed in those places. I mean, I've enjoyed Quran being recited for my students more than perhaps even my teachers. I'm just being honest. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. some of our students, when they recite Quran and you've seen them grow, it's like your own son or daughter reciting the Quran and they just they break you down. Man. You know, some of them. You know, I remember when I was memorizing the Quran and you know, inshallah, we can share some some tips for memorizing Quran as well. My, my Ustad, um, uh, Qari Ilyas, may Allah grant him a long life, mashallah. Mm. He completed memorization of the Quran in six months. Mm. He memorized the whole Quran. He, he had a, mashallah, he's got a photographic memory. And like Sheikh Abdullah, uh, similar to Sheikh Abdullah. Sheikh Abdullah has that memory too. That, mashallah. That's a secret. I, I, um, uh, I, it took me three years and six months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, mashallah, I mean, the amount of, you know, hadith and poetry that Sheikh Abdullah memorized, I don't think no, 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 have, why, why are you doing this to me? What, what would I do to you? Why, like, why are you putting me on the screen like that? What you, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, I, I, love, I love mashallah. Um, your eldest brother, his name is Mufti. Sheikh Abdullah is the eldest and Mufti Rahman is the second. I love his Urdu poetry, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, got... tell him for me, tell him for me. I'm a big fan of his Urdu share, mashallah. His poetry mashallah. is amazing. I love my brother, especially, mashallah. I'm going to be share at the head. Mujan, if you don't mind, can I excuse myself? Imam Ishaq, I apologize. I want to hear Imam Ishaq's recitation. Really, guys. Let's hear it together. Imam, let's first recite, Imam, for us. <laughs> 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن للمتقين مفازا حدائق وأعنابا وكواعب أترابا وكأسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا جزاء من رب بك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا إنا أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا إنا أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله that was beautiful recitation مفضل وهاب if you want I can you can you are you are dismissed you are free to go we're just finishing the sira set up inshallah for tomorrow inshallah. but it was an honor to have you and to be able to host you on our, on our platform inshallah we'll continue seeing you not only here but in person soon because i know you inshallah. like the road trips in the, in the states. i've actually been i've been to the states my, my sister in law's watching right now from virginia I, I i came for six weeks around three years ago just before covid um and we travel around alhamdulillah but next time i come i'm definitely going to come visit you guys inshallah no no you have to come you have to definitely come. inshallah, inshallah. 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 um 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 sheikh imam ishaq that was beautiful recitation and everybody that's listening, let's all say Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Um, it is, it is. Of course, the voice has a, a massive impact on the on the on the listeners, and also the, the the most important thing, the word, the kalam of Allah, the impact of that on a pure heart. Inshallah, may Allah make us amongst those Ameen. Ameen. who, where <laughs> Allah describes Allah describes in the Quran. <laughs> That when the Quran is recited upon some people, you could see the tears rolling down their cheeks, and it's it's the impact of the Quran. And if the Quran has not allowed, we if the Quran has not impacted us, similar to what it used to for the pious, we need to you know try to fix that issue and see why it's not like you know if you if you turn on your car and the ignition doesn't turn on, you know, and then you're like you do that you do that multiple times, you're like. Yeah. Some problem with the starter or the ignition, you know. So, if the Quran doesn't 
spark your heart, then you have to check the spark plug. You have to check the ignition. What is going mm-hmm. on? Like, you know, this is this is the word of Allah. Allah bi zikrillahi tufma inu al qulub. Allah dina amanu tufma inu qulubhum bi zikrillah. Allah bi zikrat min al qulub. So, mashallah, Imam, you you definitely touched all of our hearts that are listening on live. But you know, Imam, what is some of the tips that you can share with us tonight on how to memorize the Quran? How to enjoy the Quran? If there are people who are who are memorized a little bit and they want to memorize consistently, if you're a mother, you're a father, mm-hmm. you're of someone that works eight hours a day and they don't have time, what is your suggestion in your opinion, in your advice? So first of all, Alhamdulillah, I, I did um, Alhamdulillah write this book, 365 Tips to Help You Memorize the Quran. It's available on Amazon, and Alhamdulillah, you can buy it in the US as well. Um, Subhanallah, there's, there's there's so many there's so many tips. I, I think one of the now we just top top three tips. Number one is procrastination. Many of us we say, like we said earlier, Sheikh Abdullah, and we spoke to Mufti Abu Hab as well. We we say we're going to do it. We're going to go for Umrah. We're going to go for Hajj. We're going to memorize the Quran. Or let me go for Hajj. Then I'll memorize the Quran. <clears throat> or let me go for Umrah. So I think we need to just be focused. And and whether you memorize one juz or two juz or one page or one ruku, you know. Like we said, don't aim for the grand prize. If you can't do the full Quran, like slowly but surely, inshallah. And you know, like I spoke about the earlier gentleman, mashallah, you know, he um, you know, he memorized the Quran at a young age, at an early age, sorry. So one thing I would say, don't procrastinate. If you can memorize the Quran, we have approximately, I think, three or four months left for Ramadan. Start from now, but don't wait for Ramadan. Many people, they only memorize the Quran in Ramadan, and then afterwards they leave it. Ramadan is not the month of memorization only. Remember, we are Muslim for 365 days a year, mashallah. So tip number one, don't procrastinate. As much time as you can give, based on your own timing. You know, you know your schedule more than anybody else. Number two, especially for the parents who have children, grandchildren, you know, family commitments, you know, get yourself involved with the children. You know, um, how many of us sit actively with our children and listen to the Quran? Or how many of us actually take an interest in the Quran? In, in London, for example, many parents are so busy with the work, daily commitments, they invest in the tuition for English, mathematics, science, etc. for the secular education. But for the Quranic education, as a family, we should be reading Quran together. We should be sitting with halaqas and, and, and you know, reading the Quran to one another. And remember, you're... You don't need to have an ijazah to teach your children Quran. You can just sit with them. Sit with them and you'll acquire the knowledge. Many parents have this um, misconception, oh, I don't know Quran, I can't do anything. No, you can. The the powerful impact the parent has to help the child learn the Quran is much more powerful than the teacher. So we shouldn't just leave it to the maktabs or the madrasas or the schools. As parents, we need to actively sit with our children and make our home a family home, a Quranic home. And the third tip, the final tip I want to give, the top three tips, um, this is one of my favorite ones. It's not just about memorizing the Quran, but acting upon the Quran. Allah says in Surah Furqan, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا So on the day of judgment, there will be a complaint. Imagine if you're in the situation, you've memorized the Quran, you've taught the Quran, but هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا You know, for example, we say, going from Los Angeles to Canada is such a huge distance. So, you know, like, for example, the, the distance is so huge. So don't let it be that the distance of the Quran is far away from your actions. So we must act upon the Quran. This is what I always tell my students. First and foremost, yes, you memorize the Quran, but acting upon the Quran is just as important. You know, the famous hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayrukum man ta'allam al-Quran wa allama, or kama qala alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best of you learn the Quran, teach the Quran, yes, but act, alam, you know, amal, act upon the Quran. So there's so many more tips to give, but as I mentioned, you know, you can purchase this book. I think someone posted the link, mashallah, yeah, and it's it. available. Jazakallah khair, mashallah. And, and inshallah, what I will do, if it's okay with you, I want to give some free copies to students at Mufta as well, Institute, inshallah. So um, I'll get someone to post it to you guys, inshallah, as well. And obviously, um, you know, the Quran is available for you 24 7. Do not restrict yourselves from the Quran. Don't let it be the only Ramadan is the month that you connect with the Quran. You know, mashallah, just like you guys are doing the Sira intensive tomorrow, you're not doing it only in Rabbul Awal. You're doing it tomorrow, mashallah. And we should be learning about the Prophet every day as much as we can. So, Build a daily routine. Those of you that have 
made the intention, start today, from tonight, start memorizing the Quran from tonight. One ruku, one ayah at a time, one verse at a time. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy. Make dua to Allah. Rabbi zidni ilma. So many duas you can make. The Quran is never too late. Remember that. You're never too late to read the Quran, to connect with the Quran. It could be that one verse you memorize and you pass away after that. SubhanAllah, you don't know. You know, life has no guarantee. You know, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant your brother Jannah to Firdaus who passed away. We made dua for him. And you know, scholars, people are passing away before us, subhanAllah. And we don't know what the future holds for us, the situation with COVID. So if anything, COVID should push us even more to memorize the Quran because every single second matters, every day matters. And you don't know how long Allah has left written for you in this life. So subhanAllah, you know, just connect with the Quran as much as you can, inshallah. You know, Jazakumullah khair. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for your Amen. advice and also the book that you've written. And may people memorize the Quran and you get the reward for their memorization. People who are who are watching us and they may think like we're just a little bit uh, past the timeline of memorization. But there's some sisters in my community who are above 40, 50 years old and they've been memorizing the Quran for the past 10 years. And it's not we're not in a race to finish it in three years. We're not in a race to finish it in six months. Just start something, start memorizing. If you've memorized what you've memorized, revise it. You know, you don't want to you don't want to memorize something and then forget it also. And it, you know, I find I find the Quran as you know, it shouldn't be, but it is. It has ability. Is an excuse for us to reconnect with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We're, so we're, so we're you know, it's if it wasn't for us to read enough Quran, we don't know where our Iman would be, where mm. our our trajectory would be. You mm. know, I enjoy a lot of things. Somebody asks, you know, because I prepare speeches three, four times a week, and I sometimes I I I can't recycle because in my community everybody watches everything I say, and it's kind of like. You know, notice if I recycle speeches. So somebody, you know, somebody asked me, Sheikh Abdullah, what do you come, where do you come up with topics? Imam Ishaq, I'm not lying. When I'm doing my daily recitation, mm. hundreds of topics come to my mind. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. As I'm going through a verse in Surah Kahf or Surah Maryam, right now I'm revising Surah Ra'ad. You know, mm. and, and my, my topic today was from Surah Ra'ad because mm. لَهُ مِنْ بَنِي يَدِيمِ the Quran, it just opens up so much horizon for us. His horizon is so far, so deep. And um, it's so you can never get exhausted, bored yeah. Yeah. by the Quran. And if you can understand it, that even that is even better. So, so Imam, how many? I mean, I'm not gonna ask you, but like, I'm sure you have a lot of students in England who become hafiz now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, there's so many, subhanAllah. So um, we, I founded an organization called National Hufad Association UK around five, six years ago. Alhamdulillah, we send Hufad for Tarawi placements across the UK. Um, th there's so many, subhanAllah. We have thousands of students, you know, Alhamdulillah, um, approximately maybe a, a couple of hundred from, from myself. Um, but Alhamdulillah, you know, there's so many that are memorizing the Quran. And one thing we're pushing a lot more in, in, in the UK is the the importance of amal, of acting upon the Quran. And, and like you mentioned, Sheikh Abdullah, um, you know, the Quran is a deep ocean of knowledge. We can never be bored with the Quran. There's always something new to learn. And every verse impacts you in a different way. So you could be going through something, a trial or tribulation with your family or a spouse or work. And subhanAllah, it's happened to me so many times where a verse will just come into my, you know, I'll, I'll switch on the car, I'll listen to recitation, and the first verse will be related to something what I may be going through. And this is the beauty of the Quran because it connects you and it hits you in different ways. So when you, subhanAllah, and, and Quran is actually a journey which is, I, I believe, is never going to end. We can never say we are truly teachers of the Quran. We are always students of the Quran because the Quran, it humbles you. You know, it makes you less arrogant. It makes you, subhanAllah, you know, it, it brings you back to reality. Like this is the book, Kalam of Allah. You know, Allah says in the first, second verse of Surah Baqarah, this is a book in which there is no doubt. You know, so Allah makes a very firm statement. No matter what you do, oh my servant, this is a book in which there is no doubt. So where even if a non-Muslim picks the Quran, he or she will read this and immediately know this is a serious book because a statement has been made that is a book with there is no doubt, subhanAllah. Sheikh, I don't want to keep you too long. My, no problem. My, my parting advice to some of us out here is that you know, if you have a, st a study group, like few people, like say yeah. your mothers or fathers, mm -hmm. and you have a study group after Fajr, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, even, uh, uh, in the evenings when, yeah. uh, when your children are in school, yeah. At work yeah. in the afternoon, yeah. uh, three four times you meet, and you guys say half page, and then the, alhamdulillah the the uh, the access and the ability to do through Zoom. Before yes. it was 
so hard to find a sheikh yeah. in the community now through Zoom. If you search for the opportunities and you, you know, and make it a commitment, Allah subhanahu wa taala will make it easy for you. Amen. Amen. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala make us all people of the Quran. Amen. 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 And Amen. I know it's what three three thirty there. Yeah, three thirty. Yeah. yeah. What time is Fajr? What time is Fajr? Um, it's approximately just just before. Just before six is beginning time, so approximately around six fifteen, six thirty is the um, Jama time. You can get a small nap, a <laughs> yeah, couple of hours nap, inshallah. Before Shaykh, I, yeah. I want to go, I want to let you go, but I hear some babies crying. So, how many babies do you have? I have one one daughter. She's uh, four four years old. Make dua for her. Inshallah. Mashallah, Mashallah. What's her name? Rahmiya, Rahmiya. Rahmiya, may Allah subhanahu wa taala make her the Ameen. keenest of eyes. Ameen. Allah keep Ameen. her healthy. And I'm sure she's crying because she wants you to come to her bed. She does. She does. She you does, know, she so does. I'm going to let you go. I feel so bad. Can I just say, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Abdullah, Muftah Al-Wahhab, and the entire team of Miftah, every single viewer who watched, please keep me your du'as. And, and, and please do remember me in your du'as as well. And connect with the Quran. And inshallah, Allah will always bless you in both worlds. And inshallah, may Allah grant you all an amazing Ramadan and allow us to reach Ramadan, inshallah. Yeah, and please keep us all in the du'as, especially in the UK. Testing times for us all, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Jazakallah khair. May Allah keep you smiling, Imam. Amin. Amin. May Allah Amin. make Amin. many, Amin. many people, millions of people benefit from your knowledge Amin. and your teaching. Amin. And bless your daughter, bless your family. Amin. And we hope Amin. to see you in person. Jazakallah khair. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam. Please say salam, salam. to Imam Ishaq. Uh, uh, so generous, so kind, joining us all the way from uh, United Kingdom. And inshallah, we'll have him online again. We'll have him virtually. Inshallah, we'll have him in person. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Um, we, um, in the meantime, as we uh, le let you brothers and sisters go to bed, and, and if you're from the United States, if you're from Michigan, it's or almost 1030. And I don't know if you guys notice, I, I've been yawning all session. I'm so exhausted today. I don't know why. And tomorrow I have to get up early and um, travel to Warren, and we're excited for the Cedar Intensive. So thank you so much for everyone for joining. I mean, this is so late. I'm realizing like this time change and having it this late, man, I feel like, a, you know, I'm like it's, this is not working for me. But, you know, Mufti Doha, he has me working like, like this for him. But Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept. And everyone, I really, really appreciate all you guys joining us this late at night, enjoying this Friday Night Live, inshallah. Please share it with your family, friends, if you're joining us for the Cedar Intensive. We'll see you tomorrow. And if you're going to join us virtually, inshallah, we'll see you online. And uh, keep us in your du'as, everyone. We all need each other's prayers. And uh, next Friday, heads up, I might not be able to join in person because I'm heading for Umrah. So please keep us in your du'as. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.